Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video entitled Average Income by Age Group. And I did this video purely for entertainment purposes. I did it because I personally find this subject interesting and fascinating. I am that person that once I get to know people, I will absolutely ask them, what's your income? What is your savings rate? What's your net worth? I actually just moved into a brand new house and I've literally already talked to every single one of our neighbors about how much they paid for their house. I am just that kind of person. I find it fascinating and yeah, I'm a little bit nerdy like that. Insert nerdy guy emoji. Now that by and large is how the video was received. It was received for entertainment purposes. However, there was one major critique for this, and that is that the average numbers presented in the video are not typical and representative of the average American. And you're right. Averages can kind of be like that. What happens with averages is that they can get skewed by people who are making drastically more or drastically less. So averages are often not typically representative of what is average. Averages can easily be swayed in one direction or another. For instance, let's say we have a group of workers, one who earns $40,000 a year, two who earn $50,000 a year, and a fourth who earns $160,000 a year. What's the average for the group? $75,000. Is that $75,000 income truly representative of this group? No, it's not. And that is what happens when you look at the average income of people. Inevitably, there are people who do exceptionally well in every single age group. There are 20 somethings who are making several hundred thousand dollars a year. There are 40 somethings making millions of dollars a year. Are they representative of the typical American? No, but they are there nonetheless bringing up the averages. But since your critique was a valid one, we are doing a follow-up video. This time we are going to be talking about the median income by age because one, that is more realistic and two, seems to be what you would like to see. All right, let's kick it off with the 20 year olds. The median income for a 20 year old in America as of 2020 was $13,000. Looking at your typical 20 year old, many of them still find themselves in college or at university. Many of them have no job whatsoever. Others are working part time and others still do have those entry level positions and are just getting started out in their chosen profession. The typical 20 year old has not yet started saving for retirement and that's not all that surprising. After all, they are just starting to get their first job, their first career, that one that is in the chosen profession they're going for. They're more focused on getting that job rather than saving for their eventual one day retirement where they leave the workforce. But it's never too early to start saving and a great place to start is with a Roth IRA. Now, the only thing you need in order to start contributing to a Roth IRA is earned income or be married to someone who has it. The maximum contributions to a Roth in any given year are $6,000. And if you have this median income of $13,000, it may not be realistic to think that you can max out your Roth. It's a great goal to max out your Roth every single year, but it's not absolutely necessary. What is more important is that you get into that habit of savings. So put something away every single month into this account. Maybe that's $25, maybe it's 50. Heck, maybe you can do $100. Whatever you can do, that's great. The important thing is to get in this habit of contributing to it on a regular basis. You can always increase your contributions as your income increases over time. Just develop that habit and you will be all set for life. Next up, we have the 30 year olds and you will notice that the median income takes a pretty significant jump with the median income for someone who is 30 coming in at $40,000. There's generally quite a bit happening in your 30s. Most people at this point have worked their way into a steady career. A lot of people are thinking about marriage or have gotten married and are thinking about starting a family. A lot of people are looking at buying their first home. And of course, all of this comes while you're still tackling that student loan debt that you acquired in your early 20s. 
Yes, there is a lot happening in your 30s. No matter who you are, you can't escape it. Life just seems to get a little bit more messy once you hit 30. So how does the typical 30 year old fare when it comes to savings? Well, the median, yes, please notice that I said median, American 401k balance by the time someone is 30 years old is $10,500. That is below what professionals recommend that you have in savings at that point. The average recommendation by the time you are 30 is that you have one times your annual income saved up. But don't worry if you're like the typical American and at this point you don't have all that much saved up, all is not lost. Remember that 30 is still very young. You have plenty of time to catch up, but just remember, the earlier you start, the easier it is going to be to reach your money goals. On to 40 year olds, the median income takes a jump, this time to $500,000. Now, a lot of tenants of what I said in the video on averages still apply. At this point in life, you have more experience in your field. You've probably had a handful of promotions and these kind of things have helped to boost your overall pay. Now, most people in their 40s have progressed beyond hourly wage positions. When you're in your 20s and in your 30s, a lot of the positions that are entry level positions are still early in the company. A lot of those positions are hourly positions. That's just something that kind of happens. But as you progress to those more senior positions, those senior positions typically come with a salary as opposed to an hourly wage. Now, of course, this is not true of every single company out there, but it is a good rule of thumb. When you're in your 30s, the vast majority of workers are filling hourly wage positions. However, those tables do start to turn when you get to your 40s because now the vast majority of positions filled by workers when they're in their 40s are actually salaried positions. And how about median savings? What does the typical 40 year old have saved up? Well, the answer is $39,000. And yes, that is quite a bump up from those 30 year olds, but it is still much lower than what financial professionals recommend. The typical financial professional is going to recommend that someone who is 40 should have three times their annual income saved up. If you are like these 40 year olds and you do not have as much saved up, you are going to want to knuckle down and get serious. You are running out of good compounding years. Now I'm not saying that 40 is old, it's not, but I am saying you best be saving. Then we have the 50 year olds. The median income for a 50 year old is a cool $58,000. The typical American who is 50 years old is going to be working full time, yes. However, there is something magical that happens when people turn 50, and that is they truly start to contemplate retirement. Now, of course, they're still putting in their 40 hours a week. They're still working just as much as those younger than them. But retirement is no longer that thing that is one day far off in this distant future. Instead, it's something that they actually want to put a date to. As far as savings goes, the savings for a typical 50 year old is $56,000. And yes, this again is lower than what the professionals recommend. At this point in life, by the age of 50, financial professionals recommend that you have five times your annual income. This is simply one time your annual income if you are the typical American. Now the government knows that the typical American is a pretty lousy saver. So once you turn 50, you are allowed to do what are called catch-up contributions. For instance, under the age of 50, the max you can contribute to a 401k is $19,500. But once you hit 50, you are allowed to contribute an additional $6,500. So that means you can contribute $26,000 a year. IRAs have the same feature. If you are under 50, you can contribute $6,000 a year. At the age of 50 and older, you can contribute $7,000 a year. All of this is to help you stock away a little bit extra for those retirement years. Now, of course, you still have to find a way to come up with this extra money, but if you do, you can certainly stash it away into your savings. The median income for 60 year olds is $50,500, which is pretty darn close to what it was for 50 year olds. And that's not really all that surprising as your typical 60 year old is still going to be working away. The average age for retirement has crept up over time. And while the average age for retirement does vary by state, the typical worker is going to retire somewhere in the time frame of 62 
to 65. That's not all that surprising, as in order to be able to claim Social Security, you typically have to be 62 years old. Now, of course, there is an incentive to delaying your Social Security payout. If you wait, the average monthly payout will actually increase over time. It will actually increase a little bit every single year, and that increase does depend on a few factor, but increase all the way up until you reach the age of 70. Once you hit 70, it's done increasing, whether you decide to draw it or not. And finally, the median income for your typical 70-year-old is roughly $53,000. Now, a decent chunk of income for those who are in their 60s is likely to be coming from Social Security, as the average Social Security payout is about $19,000. The rest is likely coming from their savings and their investments that they have made throughout the course of their lifetime. Notice that the typical income stays fairly consistent from the time somebody reaches 40 onward, and it's no doubt that Social Security is a huge help to today's retirees, helping to bridge that gap between what they have saved and the savings money they need need. Yes, Social Security is a hotly debated issue. Can the system continue onward as it currently is? Not likely. It's more likely that some changes are going to have to be made, like smaller payouts or delayed ages at which you can claim. But do I actually think the system will disappear? No. But that's my opinion, and what the heck do I know? I still recommend that you save as much as you can so you have control over your own future and your own life. So there you have it, the median income by age. Yes, it is drastically less than average income by age. So what do you think? Where do you stand? Now the site I used for the stats for this video is actually pretty interesting. It has a neat little area where you can enter your age and your income and it will tell you the percentile that you fall into. So I will leave a link for that down below if you are interested. Now I hope you do well. Set lofty goals. I hope you aim to make more than the median and save more than the median because money is important. No, it is not the most important thing, but it does matter. Well, that's going to do it for me today, guys. If you got anything at all out of this video, please hit the like button. If you are new here, please subscribe or even better yet, consider sharing this video with a friend or a family member who gets this kind of subject and finds it interesting. I hope you have a great day and I will see you guys soon. Bye.